So I have been removing uh, leaves from this zucchini so that they don't shade the atlas rose because look at it poor atlas rose is full of black spots not very healthy it's very cosmetic black spots are cosmetic it's true but it still shows that the plant is not doing well so I had reservations about these two zucchinis right here and maybe they felt that because plants can feel your emotions just kidding anyway I'm going to harvest the uh, fruits today make something delicious out of it and for sure I am going to cut this zucchini out and leave the atlas rose with more um, sunlight Ooh. so that's what i'm going today going to do today and meanwhile how gorgeous is this iceberg rose so at the beginning it didn't bear a lot of flowers actually it did bear considerable amount of flowers considering that it was newly planted in the um, early summer and I have enjoyed that but look at it at its second flash now very gorgeous I'm very happy with these um, iceberg rose and that would be a hardy rose to my climate I believe it's called iceberg so I hope that's not just because it's white but it's also because it's resilient and it will survive the winter here in zone 4 and at the back there is my ever abandoned project it's a vegetable garden and more roses over here i've got another cocktail rose in pot right here and a zonia rita rose on a pot right there and how gorgeous are these distant drums roses this um second flush so the second flush Flash have been going on for a little while now the flowers are smaller than the first blooms but I heard that that's normal when it comes to roses you always get a healthier first flush and then a smaller blooms on the second flush but disclaimer they also say well, some YouTube videos that I watch say that I have to have fertilized the ground like um, soluble fertilizer and organic fertilizer on the base of the plant after its first flush and I didn't do that so it's probably used up all the organic materials there and it needed to be replenished I didn't do that so considering how lazy the master gardener is in this garden these flowers are doing very well up over here I have rose lilies in pots I placed them in pots for experiments just to see how well they would bloom uh, being planted in pots plus I didn't have a spot ready for them when I bought them from the grocery store so they are in pots the flowers are very tiny but I think that could be expected from new leaf planted bulbs they will become bigger as the bulbs mature in ground so I'm going to try and keep the soil for which um, it is planted from intact keep it intact while I'm transplanting 
the flowers into the ground and hopefully the bulbs will mature and produce bigger flowers next year this is my origold rose it is a hybrid tea which i learned now that it's not recommended for my zone because it's tender so it requires a lot of heat and it may not survive the harsh winters in zone 4 unless I do what is called a Minnesota tip and that's uh, how to winter tender roses in harsh climate it's a lot of work to do that but I'm maybe I'm gonna try because I have seven hybrid roses in this garden I was very very excited to get this garden started at the beginning of summer and I saw roses at the gardening center and I bought whatever rose that um, attracted my fancy so this is another hybrid tea rose and I have harvested roses from here already and it's starting to bloom again so that's good news and if I consider the roses that I have harvested from this rose bushes I think they have made their worth but it would be more awesome to have them come back again for another year right so those are the two ori golds and this is called first prize another hybrid tea rose it has grown very big and look at all the flowers here it is so exciting so just like the ori gold this uh, first prize hybrid tea rose i've also harvested a few roses from here already which in my opinion makes up for the price i paid for these roses already so treat them as annuals maybe but i'm still going to try and protect them in the winter the best i could this is another hybrid tea rose called perfume delight and it is so fragrant very delightful it flowered abundantly for the first time uh, I mean during the first time and it's starting to flower again but unlike um, other hybrid tea roses which flowers grow on upright stem and usually there's only one flower per stem like this one I guess there's only one flower at the tip but most are growing in clusters like that so maybe it was mislabeled and it's not hybrid tea after all <laughs> well that would be awesome because then it would be hardier and it will survive in my garden a lot longer this is a floribunda and it's labeled for zone 5 so I have a greater chance of keeping these until the next year this is called Esmeralda and I have used it in my last um, flower arrangement so you could see how really pretty this flower is there's no flowers right now there's a few buds I'm looking forward to see more flowers over there also no flowers but lots of buds coming up it's a grandiflora called Queen Elizabeth and I've heard a lot about Queen Elizabeth being um, it was a flower that had no classification when it was made and it opened the class called Grandifloras well something like that <laughs> I have been reading a lot about roses and but I planted these roses before I got my book so wise after the fact and not even because I keep forgetting what I'm learning I should 
write them down and voila okay so that's the grandiflora queen elizabeth in the middle right here is called an apricot candy and that is also a hybrid tea which means it's tender and of all the hybrid teas i have in this little garden i have seven the apricot candy seems to have the hardest time i don't know if it's because of the location that's also the very first um, hybrid tea that i planted so i wasn't able to amend the soil very well maybe because this entire garden is compact clay so i've used up a lot of compost to amend the soil we went to the compost place in our city three times truckload three times so you could imagine how much compost i used up in this garden and that's not even enough because i still need compost in a lot of spaces like you see that's pure clay right there so i basically just dug a hole and amended the soil so that i could plant that sedum and that's also true with the roses so they are surrounded with clay soil i don't know how that would work out but yep not enough um, compost back to the hybrid roses over here i have chrysanthemum surrounding the roses i mean the inner circle of the garden i have this like circle garden bed right here back up a bit so on either side of the walkway are the two oracle roses hybrid tea roses and going in is a circle which is kind of like the highlight of this garden because it's right in the middle has five more um, hybrid tea roses oh so i need to correct myself esmeralda over there is a hybrid tea rose so that makes one two three four five yeah five hybrid tea roses in here besides the apricot candy that didn't bear a lot of flowers um, i forgot the name of this one but this is also a hybrid tea rose which did not bear a lot of flowers this time so those two this and the apricot candy not a lot of flowers but the rest of them abundant flowers considering i just planted them in late may first week of june maybe so that's it for the roses on this circle for the hybrid teas anyway moving here i have entire bed of dahlias i have cafe au late or cafe au late <laughs> i don't know how to say that which is a dinner plate um dahlia i harvested a few yesterday there's only one left here the one I harvested yesterday was a lot bigger than that. They look very healthy, which is good. And this dahlia I am particularly proud of because these are planted from tubers that I overwintered from last year. I did that, guys. So, as you can see, this particular variety or cultivar is the most abundant in this garden because I had a lot of them being overwintered from last year. The best thing about overwintered tubers is it has already acclimated to my weather. 
so it's well um, adjusted I guess and from the overwinter tubers that I planted from last year I also lost many of them so some of them the, sp the sprouts have died because I was too busy as you can imagine digging this new garden that I have neglected some of my dahlias and my vegetable seedlings that's why I don't really have vegetables right now because I have neglected them and they died and some of them I have planted really late so I'm very thankful that most of the dahlias are flowering now these dahlias can be deadheaded and look at these red ones and the dinner plate dahlias in yellow it's one of my favorites are starting to bloom peace ladies and gentlemen is a paradise for earwigs over down here are we could see earwigs attack and I have more rose lilies down here mm, they're not doing perfect but they have a promise of beautiful flowers next time if I don't kill the bulbs that is I always have a harder time with rose lilies that is double petal lilies in comparison to single petals so let's hope that that rose lily would make it look at the graduation of color on this dahlia isn't she beautiful that's it for the dahlias and I'll go harvest my zucchini now there's a lot of mosquitoes down here it's unbelievable and this garden I just realized is not full sun because there's a lot of trees here which shields the garden from the sun but I think it gets enough but it could have been better that's why some of the roses are getting black spots because the more sun the roses get as well as the dahlias the more vigorous the plants become so we are surrounded by a lot of trees in this property which is very cool I love it we live in the center of the city we are just five minutes drive away from downtown but all these trees make it seem like we live in the countryside and because we have all these trees it also invites a lot of birds in the property so sometimes you could just hear them singing a chorus like right now can you hear that yes there's a lot of birds here and these enormous cherry tree we never pruned it so it's very tall now it's like 20 feet or more now is is a heaven for um, birds as well I have harvested some cherry trees from here from the lower I mean cherry fruits from the lower branches but the top branches they're for birds and I love the birds so they can have all the cherries they want and that tree over there is uh, shielding our bedroom window and you could watch a lot of baby blue jays on that tree this is my original oversized garden beds I used to have planted vegetables in there which are very successful I planted soya beans, bean runners, mostly zucchini, cucumbers, tomatoes 
um, ground cherry tomatoes a lot of success in that garden but it's oversized so it's hard to maintain so I wanted to take those garden beds and transfer them into this new garden right here but as I went on gardening along the way I took a lot of detours the roses for example is a big detour and the dahlias because this garden was meant to be vegetables but besides the zucchini all my vegetables were kaput <laughs> so back to these garden beds I need to trim prune those raspberries because they have just taken over all the garden beds I planted two magnolias in this garden this first one is called Susan it's one of the ladies they say so um, it has purple flowers almost dark pink flowers it flowers in early spring spring and the other one over there is a leonard nestle it's a how do you call it hybrid from the ever popular star magnolias which i also planted too in the front yard i have a lot of unfinished business oh look a white rose lily i have forgotten i planted white rose lilies i thought they were all pink cool okay over here unfinished business <laughs> i have some hydrangeas oh no not hydrangeas what do you call those things again hostas and i have a um, eden rose here it's a climber but look at the tips guys no buds just leaves so I have to do some research and check how or what happened here that my Eden rose didn't bear any flowers probably lack of sunlight because it's almost 10 a.m. now and the Sun hasn't touched the Eden rose yet So that's one of the reasons maybe and my dahlias are not doing so good in pot, pots <laughs> I think they lack water so I'm soaking them on my cart right now see how dry it is <laughs> I'm such a bad garden mama but anyway there's so much to do on this garden sometimes it feels overwhelming but considering how much progress we have made from late May actually the end of May so June July it's middle August now I have dug and dug and dug May and June and sporadically July and August because it became very hot considering the amount of work put in here not bad right not bad at all <laughs> so I have to think of how to make this garden look tidier probably um, outline it with boxwood I'll do that next year or maybe fence um, maybe I don't know yet um, maybe goals for next uh, gardening year so peaceful and beautiful isn't it
this garden and just spending time here is so tranquil serene you would forget your worries and frankly I have enjoyed quarantine <laughs> so much because it's it allowed me time and that time and effort gave me this garden and of course thank you to hubby and my father for helping me dig this garden and financing it also cuz these plants are all new I got them in spring early spring at the uh, nursery and grocery store so none of them were on sale because I find that if you shop early on as well there's a lot more choices than later on and I find that I found a rose that's beautiful at the rose um, I mean the nursery and I didn't buy it because I thought okay I have bought so many already and then you go back two weeks later and the roses are gone so I just wish that I bought them sooner on the positive side there's other varieties that are on sale so even though the rose that I fell in love with before is no longer there there's other roses that are for sale in other words every time I go to the nursery I come home with new rose cultivars so in this garden alone I have planted almost 50 roses it's a lot and it feels like it doesn't show very much because it's just a big mess but they're all newly planted and they're doing so good for newly planted roses let's see how they turn about after the winter i might lose some of them during our harsh winters okay that's my garden delightful souvenirs from the garden mid-august <laughs>